Hey, it's Dan Harlan. I am here with Roberto Giovi. How are you? How are you, uh, Dan? Roberto, Hi. it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And, uh, My and pleasure. A, especially about your masterworks, you know, and you've got, you've published so many, many things and all of them are great, all of them are brilliant. Uh, of course, the, the one that is most associated with you is the Card College series. Seems and, uh, so, yeah. Yep, and we are talking about uh, volume three and four. We're talking about them together. But as with, you know, all of the books in the series, it's possible that you would get one or the other or both of them together. Um, the reason we're talking about both of these uh, together is because you're the first two, volume one and two, you had intended as a single book, uh, but it got split up for practical reasons. You know, it was just much easier to have. The, and these were know, not planned. Uh, and then these I were had not, yeah. one and two, and I thought, that's, that's it. it. That's yeah. the card magic, you know. The structure of card magic is there. And I even wrote in the German version, I think, I'm, I'm never going to write again <laughs> something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it has not been translated, I think. <laughs> but no, I hope I hope it's not in the other ones. But it doesn't even matter if it is because that that uh, that uh, prediction has proven to be false, and we're yes. glad that it has. Yeah. Uh, me and, too. Me too. Yeah, because no, yeah. because I, well, here's a question that comes up every once in a while. For those of you that own Volume One and Two, you're thinking, uh, is are volume three and four more difficult? Does the material become more challenging as the volumes progress? So can you can you speak about that? Is it more difficult? Well, it's like saying, you know, uh, an encyclopedia that consists of four volumes. Yeah, the, right, right. the volume from M uh, to, to, to Z are more difficult than the one from A to D. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's not so. No. Well, uh, there are actually chapters in here which are easier than in volume one and two. Right. I mean, it's the estimation chapter, although estimation sounds like a frightening term. Yeah, and estimation not. is in volume yeah. four, if you are interested right, right, in learning right, right. it uh, in there, just, just so you know well, which is which, you can see the thing. Deck switch chapter, deck switch chapter is much is easier great. than, you know, yep. than, uh, than uh, a top chain chapter or uh, some sure. control chapter. Sure. So, the, but three and four, the reason I wrote three and four was that I realized, first of all, there are some uh, operational principles, categories of operational principles that I did not cover. Right. Yeah? If I once created in, uh, in Secret Agenda, we're going to talk a little bit later, I identified 47 categories of operational principles. Uh, controls, forces, a switch of a card or a packet of a deck, etc., etc. 47. And I had addressed, you know, the most important volume, one and two. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, here are uh, run-ups stacks, estimation, deck switch, etc., which have not been addressed at all. Yeah. So, uh, and they are equally interesting, of course, in the panorama of card magic. Sure. So I set out to study these areas, find the best methods, and one, two or three tricks that go with it that would really illustrate the, the power behind these yeah. tools. Yeah. So that's the one category uh, of entries of items. The other category would be to go back and review essential important categories like a control or the force. Sure. Sure. Uh, because the, 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 you can use just one or two controls, but there might be specific situations. For instance, you're standing up yeah, because you do parlor magic or something, and now you need to control several cards. Now that's a whole new set that comes to the table. Yeah, that's and and you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're you're touching on something here because sometimes people ask, uh, well, you know, I already have volume one and two. Uh, I, I barely had a chance to learn all the material in those. Do I really need uh, these volumes? And and what you're talking about is are are basically uh, amassing tools to put in your toolbox. And the, the more tools that you have, the better tools and the more abundant tools that you have for specific circumstances, right. well then the better you're going to be at, at dealing with those circumstances. So I, I and getting to know yeah. uh, a subject, you know. Once sure. you're interested, once you're in love with a person, you want to uh, find out more things about this person. And if you're in love with a, a subject which is so rich, so vast, mm -hmm. so profound, you know, goes back so long in history, you know, has so many brilliant inventors with so many wonderful instruments, you know, and this is just cards. Yeah. yeah. Then you just want to know more about it. And that's what this is also about. It's not necessary, you know, it's like if you have a car, you don't always need to speed to 100% of its speed. Actually, you probably never do. Sure. But you want to have the reserves. You know, and the library is the same thing. Many people say, oh, I only put the books in my shelf that I'm going to read that I will read. Well, personally, I don't do that. I have 
almost 4,000 books in 17 languages, you know. I've read most of them, some mm -hmm. I've then read several times, some I haven't. But when I have a reference, I go back, or if I stand in front of the books, I say, ah, I'm a very small part of this big picture, you know. Sure. And I'm standing on, on the shoulders of, like Newton said, I'm standing on the shoulders of those giants which are in the book. And these books tell also about these people, you know. There is, it's not a history book but it will tell you names of people who came up with the fundamental ideas, what they brought to the table, what, what really made the changes, the evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, besides being a strictly practical book, it has all that, plus all the theory that uh, is hopefully elegantly woven into it without being scary. Yeah, and, that's, uh, and here's, here's the other thing. Uh, I, I would highly recommend getting these, uh, you know, you've gotten volume one and two and you, you've learned a lot of stuff from that. Um, but there are things that have been overlooked, not just, not just overlooked by people who maybe already own these, but, but generally overlooked in the history of magic. Like, I just turned to uh, this, this particular <laughs> right, page. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things. It's called The Acrobatic Aces. By Paul it's, E. Paul. Yep, and, it, right. and, it's, and if you've, I don't know if, if you're familiar with it. If you're not familiar with it, you've got you to get it to read this. It's absolutely beautiful. It's been overlooked by many, many people, and it is, it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant way to produce the aces that, well, there's a little, just, you know, the, just, yeah, it uses, it uses that, that, that uh, technique. But it has additional things. I mean, and then you can, you Paul E. Yeah, Paul in, uh, in the 1940s has this wonderful book, The Card Magic of Paul E. Paul, which is in my recommendation list. Mm -hmm. There are recommendation reading lists in all the card college books. And uh, yeah, I've added several things to it. Sure, of sure. course. And there, and, and there are there are lots of those uh, that are hidden in both of these volumes. Like uh, there's uh, Di Vernon's Multiple Shift. Uh, you know, many people aren't using it, and it's great. You know, and uh, and you go into that. You it's go one into of the, the best. It is. You go into the master grip. Uh, you you when when we get into things that you think are more difficult, like a pharaoh shuffle, for example. Yeah. People think it's difficult, but it's covered very very well. And then you also explain, you don't have to do a full perfect pharaoh shuffle shuffle for all pharaoh tricks. In fact, the acrobatic aces is a great example. Well, you, you, when you read Pharaoh Shuffle, you think you have to do the 26 26 split and you've right. got the perfect in or out Pharaoh things. Well, that's true. Of course, there are wonderful tricks that operate with that uh, slide, with that mm -hmm. principle. But you can very easily, you know, just cut off a packet and learn in a few minutes just how to uh, weave them into the back of the remainder of the pack and you already got a perfectly Pharaoh entity and that mm -hmm. will allow you various things. Well, one example was this fine production of a card by Paulie Paul. Yeah. Another one is that you can uh, shuttle cards to specific position. Let's say you have a card at fourth from the top, now you can easily shuttle with a partial fire shuffle to seventh or eighth, mm -hmm. you know, and with another one to the next uh, position, you know, it will be 14th, 15th, or, or uh, if it's at eighth position, it can be 15th and 16th, etc. There are uh, many, you can start with a four cut setup and interlace the setup just with one simple partial slough of pharaoh, as we say, either going like this or, or going directly into a riff. I mean, different, yeah. I, I teach different ways of doing that. Which that's, that's a great way to get into, uh, I believe it's uh, the uh, slip cut uh, ace production. Um, you know, there, there exactly. are, there's lots of exactly. nice uses for that so technique. So that's the use yeah. of, of the partial uh, far shuffle, which has nothing to do with the difficulty, you know, how to be able to go the 26, 26, <laughs> you go all the, okay. This, um, we teach that too. Sure. You know, sure. That's, a, that's a bonus. But you get also from every, principle, the essence, and how to very often, more often than not actually, use it in surprisingly yeah, simple but ways that, that's and the thing that's great. Ways. That's great about the whole series. That's, right. the, that's the thing that's great about right. the whole series is that you're not just learning these slights, uh, these uh, principles in isolation. Uh, you are uh, then taught how to incorporate them into very, very strong magic. So you'll get um, use out of them really immediately. You get, a, you get to learn it. You get to try it out. You get to learn it under the best circumstances. Um, so, really, and I try not to yeah. be dogmatic about it, you know, because it's very simple as an author uh, of books. You know, you believe you've studied so much; it's, it becomes almost like a religion, and you're trying to convert everybody to it. Yeah. And I try not to do that. I try to all keep it an open architecture. I'm giving you much of my own experience and of my opinion, of course. But it's always, I hope, in such a way that you say, and now you decide, 
here is my offering. So many have complimented me on this. Uh, I'm not saying this to make me look good here, it's because it's a feature of the books that you can really come from wherever you come to the books and still get uh, some fulfilling reward from it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's, uh, it's really a great addition to uh, any library and to anybody that is serious about, uh, about learning everything that they can in the best possible way about card magic. You know, Roberto has taken all of the time to organize the information in such a way that it's enjoyable uh, and direct for you to learn it. You can't go wrong getting anything from the Card College series, so I highly recommend that you get these. Thanks so much Thank for bringing them to us. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks.